All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for uh, Student of the Gun episode number 1152. 1,152 1, episodes of live public for you guys. Shower guns and free rifles. Yes, indeed. Sounds like a good deal. That sounds like a, uh, I don't know, a, a special from Home Depot or something. Uh, maybe it's a Home Depot special. Shower guns and free rifles. Come on in. Uh, we got a Duracoat finished firearm of the week for you guys today. Well, it's an almost finished firearm. We'll talk about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have an Armed, uh, an Ahmed, an Armed um, update for you guys. And for those of you who were here last week and tried to offer help, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who were here last week and tried to offer some help. Uh, Jared missed it. Jared does, he doesn't even know what we're talking about. I'm, so we'll have to bring him up to the date. Yes, uh, we've got a, uh, obviously a crossbreed holsters, uh, dangerous on demand. They laughed. Some folk out there laughed at us. They poked their fing pointed their fingers at us. They told us we were paranoid. Well, who's paranoid now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's paranoid now? And free rifles. Would you like a free rifle? Well, sometimes you just have to wait for the UPS guy to show up, and Brown Santa will give you a box of rifles, even if you didn't order one. So there's that. There's that. All on today's super cool, fantastical episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, that's interesting. That is, a, that is an interesting sound. I hope that comes out better on the other end than it came in on my ear end. But uh, <laughs> Everything over here sounds fine. Should I be concerned? Uh, no, it's just the, the, the audio, the intro audio in, in our ears kind of went kind of in and out like that. But, uh, Damn you, Zoom. All right. Who makes the best chili? This guy. And if you didn't know, well, now you do. Uh, you know, it's something funny. Or you'll find interesting, I think, Jared, because you're hip on the whole ta Professor Paul's tactical chili thing and the origin story. Yeah. Uh, Bill, our friend Bill Frady from Lock and Load Radio, he has uh, Dave Harrington on the uh, on his show frequently. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, he has him on the show frequently, and he was going to have him on this last Thursday. That would have been cool. So you guys were on there together. I said to him, I said, I don't know if the if the radio could handle both of us at yeah, the same time. That's true. I said to Bill, I was sending him a text. I said, Hey, when you talk to Soup Dave, ask him who makes the best chili he's ever eaten. And he's like, All right, writing it down. So I talked to him Friday morning. I was like, Well, did he did he tell you? And he's like, No. I said, Why not? I said, Let me guess. You got off track and didn't ask him. He's like, Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> He said he threw me for a loop. He, he -uh. started talking about something I totally didn't expect him to talk about, and I never got around to asking yeah, him. <laughs> so the answer is uh, to the question. Uh, the the well the the answer is Professor Paul's tactical chili. I'll I'll take uh, gun trivia for a hundred, Alex. All right. The question is. Who makes the best chili Super Dave has ever eaten? Yes. And that would be me. Mm -hmm. That would be me. Uh, and if you ask him, he'll tell you. He'll tell you. I'm, just, I'm not just making stuff up here. I'm not just making stuff up. Speaking of Bill Frady, and uh, Zach, did you ever make contact with that man? <laughs> Was that a yes or no? No. Mm. No. Can you send him a text message and say, hey, when would be a good time? Hey, Jared. Yes. Can I ask a favor? Maybe. Can you show Bill Frady how to work the website? How to work Juxy. He signed up, but he doesn't know how to work it. There's an yes, I can do that. All right. I All will right. I will help a brother out, and there's yeah. also an entire 
uh, library yeah, I know, but videos. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Help a brother out. I will do that. All right. I know a guy that can help him. All right. Thank so uh, you. if you have questions, we've got answers. If you're in the Discord right now, if you're one of the anointed few and you've got questions, then just go ahead and fire them off and throw them in there. All right. Uh, so obviously we're all together uh, today. Um, and uh, Jared's back from his little uh, mini road trip, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna get on the road again. We're gonna do some more, some more training. Uh, we're gonna do medical focus training, and uh, we're, we're gonna have some family time. So, all right, it's time for a Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week. All right, for those of you that are new to the show, if you're new or recent, and when I say new, I mean you've only been here a year or two or three or whatever. Uh, <laughs> one of my many jobs in life, I have a lot, I have innumerable jobs, tasks, and so forth, is to keep the lives of the people at Duraco interesting. Mm -hmm. I talked to Amy on the phone the other day, and I said, you know, one of my jobs is to keep your life interesting <laughs> she laughed at me she laughed at me <laughs> so many many moons ago many moons ago way back when we were in the original glass case of emotion studios if you guys have been with us that long i uh i came up with the idea i was like all right we know people that make colors colored gun coating why is there not a slightly darker black? There's an HK black. There's a this black, a that black, a blah, blah, matte black. A flannel. Why is there not a slightly darker black? So I contacted, uh, at the time I contacted Mike at Duracoat. And I said, Mike, why isn't there a slightly darker black? <laughs> he laughed. He's like, I, I don't know. Why isn't there a slightly darker black? There it is. There it is. And, and uh, I said, this is what we need to do. You, I, we. We've got to. We're missing an opportunity here. Because I know the C word doesn't have it. Yep. Those, those homos over at the C word, they don't have it. And so... <laughs> So it, it went from a telephone conversation to a one-off to me painting. I don't know what I did. What did I? I coated, I Dura-coated a, I think it was a kettlebell. I think the first thing I did was actually a kettlebell hmm. with a slightly darker black. Um, Any hooser. So now if you go to the Duracoat catalog and you look under their blacks, you will find slightly darker black. Yeah. That's right. So you can have dark black or you can have slightly darker black. And if you don't get the joke, get away from me because I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> it's kind of like people who don't get this joke. The, oh, uh, $2. The, yeah. I don't know what that the, means. The, the cop chick last night, she's like, ah, I like that. And I said, yeah, this is my profiling shirt. Oh, yeah, that's, that's This is my profiling I shirt. My if people get it, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. And if they just give me like a weird... Uh, I don't get it. Look, then we don't have anything to say to each other. So, <laughs> slightly darker black is very much the same way. Uh, if, if someone isn't that from that movie uh, Top Gun or something? Real quick, real quick. So, have you guys been paying attention at all to the world of movies? Uh, no. So, don't hit me. What's so going remember, on in the world of movies? So, you remember the the new Top Gun? The, I do remember that that's a thing. The really cocky young guy who like yeah. is a total pretty boy. Oh, the one who's who's supposed to be the new goose. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah he's the he's goose. the new. Yeah. He's the new goose. Yeah. So that guy is now going to be in another movie about being a smart ass pretty boy, in, and that's where it's fine to stand radio. Fighter uh, jock in a fighter plane. Really? Yes. Well, there you go. And I thought I was like, so can the you producers be must have liked the way he did it. Yeah. Is it there possible to be profiled as a pretty boy who flies planes? Military uh, planes? I don't know. I don't know. Wait, it's possible. So you're not talking about Goose's son. You're talking about the other dude, right? Yeah, he's the, talking the about pretty the pretty boy. 
The one that yeah. didn't get chosen to be on the team. And, 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 I, yeah. and I misspoke. I said Goose. Yeah, I was supposed to be saying Iceman. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm that, I'm, I totally. Sorry. I screwed up my Top Gun characters. That's my fault. Yeah. Shame. Uh, yeah. I want so my shoot off. The That's new Iceman. So he was supposed to be the, the he was the antagonist. Yes. Mm. So the new antagonist. Yes, the new antagonist. So. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's kind of messed up when you when you when you look at that. Yeah, and I'm all kind of depressed. But when you when you uh, juxtapose the new Top Gun to reality, how Val Kilmer actually is crazy sick and has lost his ability yeah. to speak and so forth. And you're like, oh wow, that's that wasn't he wasn't just acting. That was like it was like real. But Val Kilmer's not dead as of right now, as of recording time. Yes, he's not. So. Don't don't freak out yet, but let's go ahead and get back to Duracoat since that's what we're talking about, and I don't know how we ended up not there. Uh, <laughs> so that is the origin of slightly darker black. When you said, "All right, I've been here for a long time, Paul. I already know that." Ha ha! Calm down. You know how we like to do things. You know how I like to keep Amy's life interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, "Amy, I said, why aren't you doing?" baby poop yellow she's like uh i'm like no you see sometimes when i come up with ideas they seem really good in my head but they don't seem good in anyone else's head Mm -hmm. but sometimes you also have to trust yourself Mm -hmm. you have to trust yourself and my question to you you uh in the very near future uh i should have in my hot little hands a can of baby poop yellow and a can of bush green that I'm going to hold together. I'm going to do it like I'm going to like Wonder Twin Powers activate. I'm going to hold them together. And that will be the ha ah, Bush traditional. The did Bush War traditional. Did you tell her that you're going to paint it with the brush? No, no. <laughs> she would cry. No, she would cry. But that will be the Bush War traditional package, right? Now, what I will probably have in my hands will be one-offs. <laughs> and they, they will be unobtainiums. Now, if you, if you're out there, if you're a young millennial fornicator um, or a Gen Z fornicator, now, see, the thing is, Jacob is a millennial fornicator like you. Yes. But he gets it. Yes. He totally gets it. So I'm wondering how many millennial fornicators out there get it and understand the purpose and the significance because amy's like well we'd have to come up with a template pattern i was like whoa 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 yeah stop pump the brakes i I no you don't (laughs) i wouldn't have known about it unless you did the thing Mm. because we didn't learn about rhodesian anything no no they, they don't teach that they don't teach that in school you have to learn that on your own so um yeah so I said, look, it needs to look like a 19-year-old was sitting on an ammo crate smoking an unfiltered camel listening to Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones on a radio that's hanging on a post. That's how it needs to look. That's that's what we're going for here. Not, I have a really nice, uh, you know, I don't. I have a really nice shop and I have air air guns and i have templates and 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 i'm really careful and it's going to look beautiful no it's the opposite it literally should look like a 19 year old was sitting on an ammo crate in a great big in a motor pool smoking an unfiltered camel listening to creedence clearwater revival did you post a picture of the one that you did with the, just the, the ak paint? yeah 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 i'm sure i have i'm sure i have I'm going to try to find it um, so Zach can show it to people. So anyway, like. if you guys see, I sometimes people in the industry, when I throw them ideas, they're like, uh, they cringe a little bit. <laughs> people in our industry, I, oh, it'll go way back. It'll be like, like months back, uh, months and months back. Eggs. Man, we so have a variety of things on this. So uh, any hooser, if you out in the student of the gun audience, this is when you need to step up. This is one of those crowdfunding or crowdsourcing kind of things. If you think that that's a good idea, if you would love to be able to 
have the ease of purchasing baby poop yellow bush green and doing your own bush war traditional <laughs> there's good stuff our our instagram page is so good uh, there's so, so much, much good joy. stuff in it uh but if you'd like that what you're gonna have to do though that's it that, 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 that wasn't uh, it uh that is it is that yep that's it oh and i, I actually that's just the paintbrush one no, not since the paintbrush that's what one. I'm that's for. oh, the paintbrush one is. Yeah, I is was a, like, that doesn't. Yeah, look go like. down, go down. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, FN that I did the uh, SA fifty eight from DS Arms. Uh, oh, oh, go up. Oh, hang on a second. That's Ooh, that's it. That's it. Now, 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 hang on. Go back up to when oh, I was squatting. Okay. There, there was a squatting one. Nope, that's not it. All right. Yep. Yeah, so that's it. I uh, will, Zach. Um, okay, so there's there's is, a better one though. I'm sure there's. Yeah, a better I'm gonna one. send this one to Zach so he can get one up there because people are probably okay. chomping at the bit. And then I'll send you a better one. There you go. So coming in the Discord, crowdsourcing Duracoat. If you think this is a good idea, and if you would purchase it, now this is the thing: you can't just be be like t-shirt jerks. They're like, Why you know, you if you buy made a, a dragon, a, a t-shirt. I don't get it. Yeah, I know. If you'd buy, if they would make a T-shirt, I would buy it. And people say that, and then they don't do it, and then I look like a jerk because you know nobody buys them. Uh, yeah, we're getting close. You're getting close. You're getting close. Yeah. So if you really legit, no kidding, think that the the bush war that's Aha. it, the bush war traditional is what you would want to do. Yeah, if you'd like to emulate what we're doing here with the Bush War traditional. All right, there you go, buddy. Then uh, that that is my 19-year-old sitting on an ammo crate, smoking a camel, listening to uh, the doors break on through to the other side. But I thought it was painted black. Well, but they're whatever. Not painting it black. Why painted black. Listen? Painted baby Creedence, poop. Creedence, yellow and Bush green. You know, break on. Welcome uh, Zach, back can in the you jungle. That you heard me. That tell you about the run through the pictures. jungle oh you know i got i got the pictures but i was trying to sign into instagram so i could look at them and it was a whole thing yeah oh it won't let you without yeah you so without here's the deal the long story short is if you think this is a good idea if it's something you'd like to participate in if you'd like to be the first kid on your block to have duracoat baby poop yellow and bush green if you'd like that you're going to need to contact duracoat directly now here's the deal Duracoat, after having, inst after, I think they, they lifted the ban, but for a while, uh, Instagram had put a ban on hashtag Duracoat because it violated community standards or something super gay like that. Um, so they've pretty much, uh, they made the executive decision that they're all done with socialist media. Like if you look at their Instagram page, I think they haven't posted anything in a long, long time. Um, but, uh, any hooser yeah right there that's the last thing they posted it's basically socialist media can consume a satchel of richards uh that duracoat is of the belief that socialist media can consume a satchel of richards and that they don't need them it says here i'll read this it says due to the recent increase well when was this 84 weeks ago doesn't give me a date Due to so the recent increase in social media's infringement on our First Amendment rights, we will no longer be posting or monitoring Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Please contact us directly via our website, email, or phone. DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com, info at LowerWeaponry.com, 800-830-6677. Now, guys, please do not blow up their phones because that is annoying for um, sometimes, unless you need help with your product. Right, if you if need help. just calling to talk, it's different. Yeah, but here's the help, thing. Call them. However, if for this purpose of the uh, the baby poop yellow, please send them an email, info at Lauer. Yeah, you can send them an email, say, and just put in the title bar, baby poop yellow, and um, they'll get it. They'll understand. Uh, and and they'll, Amy will... That people will be telling her, hey, I don't know what's going on, but people are sending us emails that say baby poop yellow. <laughs> if you want that, if you want them to produce it, because we know the C word, those homos over at the C word aren't going to do it. So if you want a baby poop yellow bush green so that you can have a bush war traditional pattern, let them know. Okay. All right. All right. I'm all done talking about that.
That's it. No, 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 no. Oh, Sierra Delta Sierra SDS Imports, the makers of the importers of lots of stuff, uh, including a brand new, and it is official now. Uh, it is official. The 10 millimeter uh, TSAS 1911 pistol is now official. It is it is on the website, and it is listed as the Delta 10. The TSAS 1911 Delta 10. So if that is something you would be interested in, you need to contact your local dealer, distributor, firearms retailer, and tell them, hey, do you have the new the TSAS D10 Delta 10 10 millimeter pistol? And if they say no, then you say, why not? And can I get one? And if you order one, can I buy it from you? That's what you do. So... That's kind of a neat thing, and if you're looking for uh, a ten millimeter, a ten millimeter nineteen eleven, there you go. They've got that. SDS Imports is bringing them in. Yes, indeed. Now, <laughs> I sent to my credit. I sent an email to Dave, the other Dave, not that Dave, but the other Dave, and I said, Dave, you need to update your website because GunCon is over and they did it <laughs> yes indeed they did it they said uh, the great American says 2023 is coming fast and our <laughs> our show season is over for now but shot show and the great American outdoor show are on the horizon oh no shot show is that close already yeah. Holy cow. well it's not that close I mean it's September almost. What well, is well at this point? It's when this drops. September no, it 1st. actually this drops in August. Oh, thirty-one days in August. Oh yeah, oh right. yeah. We'll be returning on that day. Yeah. So there's that. So that's that, Mister. That's that. It says the YC9 is getting closer to ever than completion. Hydro dipped carbines are rolling out, and da 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 ba ba do be do. Uh, if you've not visited our website in a while, we invite you to take a look around. So there you go. Take a look around. Snoop around. And uh, you're welcome, all you uh, High Point fans, for for your 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 faithful friend, Professor Paul, uh, sending a message to Dave saying, Dave, go update the website, man. <laughs> this is when they're going to say, we already had it on the schedule to update. We didn't need you to remind us. And that's when I say, sure you did. <laughs> oh, I, t I kid because I care. Isn't that true, Jared? I kid because I care. I kid because I care. Oh, man. <laughs> so there you go. So there's that. That's that, Mr. That's that. Indeed, indeed. Moving on. Juxi, J-U-X-X-I dot com. The, uh, well, they, it, they will soon, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next month, what's going to happen eventually is the communists the, who run the, uh, socialist media will get, and what we've seen, what we has been demonstrated during the last week with the admission of, uh, that, uh, robot Zuckerberg, the, uh, the space alien is that, yeah, if the government makes a phone call and we already knew this. Because remember when they did the under the Project Veritas did the Twitter things, mm -hmm. how people in the government made a phone call and told them what to start censoring. Hell, the redheaded Chucky doll even admitted during a White House press conference yeah. that they were in contact with Facebook every day, advising Facebook on quote troublesome content. Yep. So. Your government in Washington, D.C. is engaging in censorship via proxy. So what they do is they're like, oh, we're not censoring anything. Oh, we're, oh, well, well, we believe in the First Amendment. Well, what, what well, do you aren't suppose you, that would be done to that company if they didn't? Well, see, censor the regardless, the, that's the the problem is, is that we have a government yeah. that's sending emails, making phone calls, uh, and I was committing I, censorship question, via proxy. Oh, yeah. My question thugs. was posed to the, 
the FBI. Well, what if we don't censor it? Yeah. Then what happens? Well, it's oh, it's like the mafia. I mean, maybe nothing. It's like maybe if what if I don't pay you back this money, or what if I don't um, pay you the protection money? Then what happens? Oh, uh, I guess I we mean, just nothing find out. Probably will happen. I mean, I can't see the future. You know. Mm hmm. But it, it, it would, would be a shame be best if your business if were to burn did. down. Yeah. It'd be a shame if you were to have an accident. It would be a shame if you were to slip in the shower and shoot yourself in the back of the head twice and then someone else were to take your place that yeah. would, you know, see reason a little better. That's right. It would be a shame if you were to go to a park in the middle of the night and put two bullets in the back of your head while committing suicide. Because we all know that's how people commit suicide, right? They they go into a park all alone and they reach around the back of their head and and shoot themselves in the back of the head. We know that. Well, if they're friends of Hillary and Bill, they do. That's how you commit suicide. But seriously, folks, uh, Jukesy. Jukesy is not beholden to YouTube or Google or Facebook or Instagram or anyone. So if YouTube decides, all you mean gun talky people are bad and we're going to take down your videos, it won't affect Jukesy. If, if Twitter or Instagram censor your content, it won't affect Juxi because they own and operate and control everything they do. So uh, you might want to take a moment and get over to juxxi.com and get signed up. And while you're there, follow Student of the Gun. Yep, subscribe or, to the Student of the Gun channel. Or they can do the typical American route they can complain about Facebook and complain about YouTube and never go to the alternative platform. And then the alternative platform dies and be like, how come that one platform died? Because you morons wouldn't get off Facebook and Instagram and go somewhere else. Yeah, I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. Not, so, not like our listeners, like the royal you. Yeah, the royal you. Well, if our listeners get butt hurt, they really shouldn't be here. It's kind of like if you don't understand sarcasm, you should go, I don't know, somewhere else. Take card sarcasm 101 with uh, what's yeah. his face. Sarcasm what? 101 with a... Uh, what's that comedian that did that? Uh, I don't know who did that. Oh, man. He did a... That was, oh, 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 that was oh, Jesse, oh, wasn't it? Oh, it was a Saturday night. Well, oh, we can't yeah, that, play it because remember we got oh, in yeah. trouble. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, it was the one who just died, Norm oh. McDonald. No, no, way. Was, no, 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 no. It was Joey from freaking Friends. Oh no, it wasn't Joey. It was Chandler. But Norm McDonald was in the class. Norm McDonald was in the class, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it was Matthew vintage. Perry. SNL vintage. It was Matthew Perry. And there's Norm MacDonald yep. in the front asking him questions. So bless his heart. Rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Oh, I but thought yeah. Chandler was the one with the long face. Which one's the long with the long, with the long face? That's Ross. Ross. I've seen like one episode of Friends ever. But here's the thing. You knew exactly who I was talking about. You knew exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, when I was talking to, with Joe the other day, uh, with uh, Joe Mo, and that's his real name. Um, on uh, on Marty's show on Talking Lead, Joe said he goes, he goes, I ha I I came in and he said there was a note from a customer that said he had come in and talked to the gentleman with a distinguished jawline, and he was talking about me. <laughs> with, that's funny. With the distinguished jawline. Uh, <laughs> So there you go. All right, all right, all right. Moving on. Get over to Jukesy.com. Sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. Jeez, Louise. It costs you, like, really a minute of your time. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink some water and be quiet. And if you're a new listener, or any listener, for that matter, just pay attention. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. I'm 
I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I'm gonna tell you what. This is me telling you. I I believe that I may just be the hardest working man. I am the James Brown of Gun Talk Radio. I am the James Brown of firearms podcasting because I am the hardest working man here. Do you know how I know that I'm the hardest working man? Because I actually go on other people's shows. And when I when I say that I'm the hardest working, do you know how much of other people's shows are top of the hour, bottom of the hour, middle of the hour commercials, and so on and so forth? Podcasts? Yeah, well. Zero. Yeah. Podcasts are zero, but still, it, when you bring three or four guests on, it's easy for the host because the three or four guests, just they just talk. Of course, the trick with that. It's actually, I, I think it's probably the same because as a host, you have to listen. Uh, you have to listen and talk. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. You can't just, you can't, you can't just, I don't know how to explain this. So, so Jared, when you just have pulled out a, 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 a 14 gauge needle and burst my balloon. Yeah. But anyway, if you guys think I'm the hardest working, uh, if you think I am the James Brown of firearms stock radio, you the hardest person, you can vote for working. me at juxy.com. That's funny. You can vote at uh, juxy.com. Go there and vote for me as the hardest working man in firearms radio. Now we've got a Brownells bullet points for you here. And it's brought to you by these folks uh, in Grinnell, Iowa, called Brownells. What? I'm going to go in. Uh, I was on Brownells' website, and they have a Brownells. Uh, it is the. Uh, it's an LPVO. Now. I'm I'm kind of I'm I've gotten a, a newfound respect for LPVOs, b- based on uh, our buddy Ken Valier showing up with one. It's a li- loser person that's very <laughs> the uh, LPV, a low power variable optic. You see these. This was a creation. This was something that the Army decided about ten years ago that they had to have. They had to have them, and so. Scope manufacturers are like, well, okay, if you have to have it, I guess we'll build it for you. But it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> and the government laughed at me like, well, that's what we have is a lot of money. Well, where did you get it? We stole it from the people. And even if we run out, we'll just ask the, ask the Federal Reserve to make more, and then we'll just make more. <laughs> Like it's gonna cost a lot of money. <laughs> oh, that's me laughing in Pentagon. So anyway, uh, they have Brownells has in stock right now an LPVO. It's a one to six, and it's actually a really good price. It's four hundred thirty nine dollars. Uh, it's a one. It's a mil uh, a mil adjustment. It's a point one mil click uh, adjustment. And if you have skin Skill. Now, see, here's the thing that concerns me. What is this thing called? It, it's it, it, it. Yep, this is what concerns me. So, it's the low power. Uh, it, it's on their. It's the, it's on their homepage. If you go to the homepage, it's the first. It's that. It's that. The problem with LPVOs is not really the power. But this says MPO. My mind is blown. Okay, yeah, match precision optics. That's their line. But the the LPVO is the generic. Okay. Yeah, so if you uh, if you go to brownells.com, there's a link directly in the show notes to go to this. Yeah. But if you go to Brownells and you're looking for the the acronym LPVO on the picture, you're not going to see it. Oh, yeah. I, I apologize. And, and and I actually, a few years ago, someone was like, what do you think about LPVOs? And I was like, I don't, I don't think anything about them. It because, comes with donuts. Yeah, it comes with donuts. Uh because what is that? And they're like, oh, the low power variable optics. I'm like, oh, because when they first came out with the one by sixes and the one by eights, that's just what it was. And then the internet had to come up with a cool acronym oh, because yeah. that's how the internet is. That's what, people, that's what makes people yeah. buy stuff, didn't you know? Yeah, cool acronyms. Um, the problem with, with, with low power variable optics or uh, whatever you want to call them is not the power of the optic itself. The problem is the reticles that they put in them. And if you 
if you never have to deal with wind, and and here's the deal: the reason that these are so popular is because they're used by people who shoot who play gun games, right? And when they're playing gun games, they're shooting targets at 50, 100, 150, 200, and maybe 300 yards for a long shot. And the truth is, if you're in the, on the East Coast, east of the Mississippi, and there's no wind, then it, then it doesn't matter. You know, If you're trying to shoot long distance and you need to dope wind, these, these kind of radicals here uh, are nest no bueno. Es no bueno. So if you're going to shoot, and here's the crazy thing. It's like, if you're going to shoot close, like, well, if I'm shooting close, then why am I using a magnified optic? Well, I mean, relative, relatively speaking. If you want to play games with guns, and that's your bag, and that's your thing, you're a gun game player, and you need a low-power variable optic to play your favorite gun game, well, Brownells has you hooked up because I can tell you what, the comparable one from Loophole is about a grand. Did you see the, op- I mean, the reticle? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because the mouse, it goes perfectly. It fits perfectly. It fits in perfectly in as a crosshair. I was like, huh. It's like, wow, that would be cool if they did that. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is the ARMED project, also known as ARMED. Um, so the Ahmed project after Jared and well Jared and the family went on a little sojourn, and it's none of your business where they went, but they did That's right, and now they're back. Yeah, you don't need to know. So while they were on the sojourn, Zachary and I, and we talked about this last Wednesday. We took the Ahmed because I finally got all the pieces parts. I got the pieces from Brownells. I got the pieces from Magpul. I had the pieces that I already possessed. Uh, put them all together. I was like, well, we need to test it out. So I went out and we did some testing and I zeroed the optic and everything was running great. Then I went over to the pickup truck and I had the Armed rifle and I had uh, an XM-177 or the BRN-177. Had that and somehow, I well, we took pictures. We needed to take pictures of pieces and parts and so forth. So what I did was I disassembled the upper. Uh, where I just I took the upper off the lower and we did pictures and blah 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 put them back together and I started having problems and we talked about this we talked about how uh, yeah yeah I guess so uh, we talked about how we had I had swapped the upper and the lower between the the other gun and I didn't have any problems I'm like what in the world is going on and i even called my friend zach hall from uh Atlas defense who's a gunsmith and an engineer and i said bro i don't know what's going on right and i explained the the problem to him he goes well it sounds like either a gas problem uh he goes check your gas key and i'm like no the gas key's staked it's a staked gas key it's it's good and he's like okay well that that's fixed it and he goes well maybe this maybe that and so after I got off the phone with him, I actually went over to the workbench and I completely disassembled the arm in and I had it. I mean, well, you don't know, field stripped it, took it apart and I got all the parts laying there and I looked down and I had this epiphany and I'm like, all right, so on an AR, you have a pivot pin mm-hmm. and a takedown pin. Mm-hmm. The pivot pin is up front. Mm-hmm. The takedown pin is in the back. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, when you assemble a standard AR-15 lower, once you've installed the pivot pin and once you've installed the takedown pin, they're captivated. They don't come out. I mean, well, you can pull them out, but when you draw them out, they stop. They don't come all the way out of the gun. Right. Now, the way the, the guys at KE Arms, with the way they built that is they have essentially... It's like an HK pin. It's not an HK pin, but it's very similar to an HK pin. Uh, which has a little detent ball, and you can pull it all the way out. Yeah. Right? You pull them all the way out, put the thing in, stick them all the way back. Well, I'm looking at them on the bench, and I, I realize, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're not the same length. Mm-hmm. The takedown pin is about, what, an eighth of an inch shorter yeah. than the pivot pin, which is the same way a regular AR is, right? But the thing is, once you've installed those, you never think about it again. They don't ever come out. They just stay in place. 
So I, I, I thought, oh, man. So I took the lower, and I put the short pin in the front. And I realized that if you put the short pin in the front, it doesn't lock. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come out all the way, and it doesn't lock in place. And you can put the the other pin in, and it locks perfectly fine. So I thought, okay, if this is the case, mm-hmm. I'm really going to feel like a tard. So what I did... <sighs> was I made sure that everything was put together correctly, Mm -hmm. and I drove over to the local indoor gun range because I didn't want to drive all the way out in the desert again because that's like an hour and a half round trip or two hour round trip. So I drove over to the local range, and I plunked down my 15 bucks to buy some time on the local indoor range. I took 50 rounds of Black Hill ammo, Black Hills ammunition, four brand new mags, I loaded them all up. I even, I spread the ammo out between the mags so that I could change mags when, because at first Zach's like, he goes, sounds like a bad mag. I said, yeah, I thought that too, but I rotated through four different magazines and it did the same thing with all of them. And he's like, oh, well, it's not the bag then. I'm like, let's say I got four bad mags. Um, so guess what? I, it took me all of 15 minutes to run through 50 rounds through four magazines not one single stoppage. There you go. So. It, it's funny how when. The lesson learned yeah. is. And, and see that the funny, the funny thing is when I used the Cav arms rifle way back when uh, in 2006, when I took fighting rifle with James and he loaned me a Cav arms rifle, I didn't disassemble it. I didn't take it apart and fart with it or anything. Why well, you didn't clean it? James was like, no, just give it back to me. And I was like, yeah. So I never disassembled it. It was never a thing. So this is something new. So it is, I mean, because the pins look, if you just like throw them down, they look identical unless you put them next to each other. And you're like, oh, the one pin is an eighth of an inch shorter. And so what the, and I called Zach on the phone. I was like, dude, after after I successfully ran the test and everything went fine. Like, I was thinking too I, high level here. I called him on the phone and I was like, are you sitting down? Because, and I said, because you're going to be laughing at me. He's like, what? I, he goes, I am sitting down. And what? Um, he said, yeah. He said, what would happen if you did that is the pin would back out and you would have a, ti- a tiny bit of flex between the upper and the lower receiver. Well, if you have that, if you have that flex or that that little gap movement and what would happen is i would i would i i put it together i fired one round two round boom boom nothing yep so what was happening is the pin was it was Just holding enough it was holding by friction yeah but then when it recoiled when it it would back out and then it would create a gap between the upper and lower receiver and that was just enough of a gap for the bolt not to grab yeah that makes around sense and load mm. so uh, learning all kinds of things my my and i'm gonna total i'm gonna this is a learning point right and so how, how do we learn we learn from our mistakes and we learn from the mistakes of other people <laughs> so the mistakes of other people would be me don't or do make sure that if you have a KE arms over and see, and as I was talking to Zach, I said, I said, I hate to, you know, I hate this is going on because I know people are like, that's why you should never buy that. That's garbage and, and it's junk and you should never buy that. And I'm like, oh man, it's not the device's fault. No. And see what I couldn't figure out is when I swapped the other, the upper with the lower, I put it down there, ran just fine. And I swapped the other lower with the upper, you know, I put the brand new upper that I built on a, on a, brown else lower and it fine ran i was like what the what so yeah super well, simple is. yeah stick the the right uh, the right pins in the right holes and uh you'll be you should be okay <laughs> that's funny so there you go everything else ran fine the uh the flash hider compensator uh you know uh ran fine the uh, i i threw a a bushnell one of their black rifle optics or i think they call it black rifle ar the ar optic threw that on there just fine no problem the uh the unobtainium upper receiver from dpms from 15 years ago right just worked just fine everything was fine um so there you go there i you go. i think differently about the like you said that people would 
would um, say that that's why you don't buy that thing because it's a piece of junk or whatever mm. because of that issue. I think that it's, I think a little bit differently myself because I like to know and understand things in the way that they work. And what that did is it gave us an opportunity to, to learn something that we hadn't been able to learn before oh, because yeah. it was a unique issue. Yeah. And, something. But now if that happens again, that's going to be part of the debugging process. It's like, okay, we're, instead of starting at a higher level, let's just check the pins first. Did you, and, did you unplug did you, it, you turn unplug it off it? and plug it back <laughs> yeah. in? Yeah. Yeah. Is your rifle plugged in? Yeah. Look behind the desk and make sure your rifle's plugged in. Okay. Be, because like with, with all your experience with this stuff, it's, you, you go directly to, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking the higher I'm, level I'm, problems, I'm, I'm, right? I'm checking the gas tube. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm like making sure the gas tube is staked properly. I'm checking the gas key to make sure it's yeah. staked down. And I'm like, what, the? you know, and, and, and Zach and Zach's like, he goes, well, maybe, you know, get a different bolt carrier, swap the bolt carrier out and see if it runs with that bolt carrier. Yeah. You know, we're like way up here. Yeah. <laughs> we're way up here diagnosing stuff. And it's, and it's actually, well, it's right down here. Yeah. It's like, just put the right pins in the right holes and it'll <laughs> work. So there you go. Lesson learned. So we're moving forward with the, the Armed project. Yes, indeed. All right. Now it's time for me to be quiet and Zach to talk to you guys. So listen up. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. All right. Do you have the icon pitches in stock? Yes, indeed. No, we don't. But All right. that is something that the public has not been informed of yet. The grad <gasps> program knows because they got the early bird pre-order discount. Oh. But right now, as we speak, for the first time ever, kind of, we have the official Student of the Gun icon being made into very cool Velcro PVC patches. That's nice. right. That are going to be made available in the USA. In made the USA. In the USA. That we people didn't... say it's like, oh, you can't bring manufacturing, you can't bring blah blah blah. Try to try to order this thing in the USA. You can't. Guess what? We did it. So take we did that. it. And by take yeah. that, I mean uh, look forward to that. Look uh, forward get excited to it. Yeah. To it. Find yourself your favorite vest or your favorite bump guard or whatever. Rip off whatever you got on there already, unless it's one of our patches, and then finding somewhere else to put this. <laughs> and we will let you know as soon as they are available for pre order. Keep your eyes open in, on your email. Keep your ears open on Student of the Gun Radio. And we will let you know as soon as you can get your grubby little hands on one of these things. I, we should go. have a picture soon. I got an update from the dude uh, yesterday at the time of recording awesome. saying right. that the mold is almost ready and that we should have a picture of the first one uh, this week. Awesome. So, everybody, so you'll be able to get that. that at shopsotg.com. Oh, yes. Indeed. Is it going to be a pre-order for the public or is the pre-order only for grad program? Uh, the the grad program got an early bird discount, but there will be a pre order for the public. Okay, all right. So, so again, you mean if I went to get sotg.com and signed up there for a, a dollar for a thirty day trial, I could get a pre early bird discount on this patch? Absolutely, you could. That is exactly oh, that's what I'm saying. Yes, right? you could do that. You, you, is the early bird discount more than a dollar savings? Yes. Oh wow! So you mean I can make money by going to get sotg.com? Basically, yes. That's exactly what wow, we're saying. That's, that's really cool. Wow, that's pretty awesome. We are awesome. All right, moving on. It is time for a Student of the Gun homeroom brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters. All right, uh, here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to contact Crossbreed and try and convince him to produce a, show, a shower holster. I'm not going to do that. But if you'd like to be dangerous on demand, actually have a high-quality holster, a high-quality belt, uh, and all the accessories and accoutrement so that you can be an armed citizen, well, there you go. Go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. Use the promotional code SOTG. You'll save some money, get a high-quality product, you'll be a happy camper. Do you recall, just only a few months ago, it was this year, wasn't it, Zach? What, it was Let's this year this. that we did. Was it October? When, when did we October. do 
if we go to Juxy.com, I bet you at Juxy.com there is a video from us entitled Shower Gun. I bet there is, but I bet it doesn't have the right date on it. December 15th, 2021. Oh, okay. There you go. We did. We actually did home invasions and shower guns. Uh, So we've got a video. There's a video link out there. And I talked about it. I talked about it at length. And we actually, Zach did a, we did a full length one, which was like a whole five minutes. And then for you uh, modern Gen Z people with, with, who have zero attention span, uh, we did one that was only about a minute. Uh, just a quick. And some people out there in the world poked fun at us. Well, I would hope that I never lived in an area where I would have to have that. Where do you live that you think you need to have a gun in your shower? Oh, uh, I don't know, you gigantic bag of douche. Uh, where do you live? So, who's laughing now? Hmm? Who's laughing now? Yes, indeed. According to this, it was eight months ago. It was eight months ago that we did the, that we featured, discussed, and displayed the shower gun what's in your bathroom well we have a story to reinforce uh the fact that you should always listen to us and uh well pay attention august 17th 2022 from just happened j4.com this is a local channel in milwaukee milwaukee his mother of two fatally shoots alleged intruder claims self-defense The mother, who asked not to be identified, told TMJ4 News that she was in the shower when she heard her 12- and 14-year-old children screaming from the living room. A woman, this is Milwaukee, a woman defending her children, she claimed. She uh, claimed. She claimed. Yeah. Shot and killed an intruder who broke into her home on Monday morning. Well, there was an intruder that was dead, and her children were there, so defending her children. And she was in the shower, she, so I'm I'm thinking it's kind of hard to premeditate something like that. Uh, the mother, who asked not to be identified, that's uh, said that she was in the shower when she heard her 12- and 14-year-old children screaming from the living room. Without hesitation, she raced to her bedroom, grabbed her gun, and ran into the hallway to face the intruder. It all happened so fast, an adrenaline rush, she said. The man was already being attacked by her two pit bulls, but Which she shot good. him multiple times because he wouldn't stop coming. He's coming right for us. Yeah, he was coming right for her. A neighbor called her a hero. The mother said the intruder appeared to be in his late 30s and was acting erratically. <laughs> you no, think? He was in the house. Well, he broke into the house. Um... Milwaukee police have not identified the man. They arrested the woman but released her several hours later after questioning. Mm-hmm. Arrested they her they, out of her own home. Yes. Police said that they won't be releasing any more information, and the incident will be referred to district attorney's office. The mother said that her children are frightened, and they plan to move out once they are able to find a new home. There you go. A neighbor and a community activist helped clean up the crime scene after authorities removed the body. The mother bought the gun 10 years ago, she said, after discovering a man sleeping under her son's bed. Whoa. Whoa. She said she'd hoped she'd never need to use it. Oh. You want to go into a short diatribe about that kind of mindset, hoping that you never need to use it? Mm. Uh, there's that, there's so much we could talk about. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the I the think main we talked th- about that before though. Yeah, talking about what Ed Morales said and and all that stuff. It's so. like when you, if you're going to buy a gun for self defense, you're and this is see this is the 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 di- difference between owning objects and having the mental capacity. Uh, and it's like well. I hope I never have to use this training. I hope I never have to do this. Yeah. You know, we're going to teach you this, but we hope you well, never have to use it. Who walks around in the world hoping that they'll be able to, to like, or have to go oh, a lot that of mental stress? Yeah, a lot of people, well, they, they hope they never. And, and see, that's, that's, I can't, it's, it's simplistic idiot speak. Uh, it, what is it's, it's the, it's the it's the I I really so desperately want to seem reasonable that I'm going to say things that shouldn't that don't need to be said. See, th- that's something that doesn't need to be said. If you go to a class, a firearms training class, and the instructor says, "Well, we're going to do this and this and this, and I'm going to teach you this," but we we hope and pray that you'll never have to put this training into into use. 
why what what are you talking about why did you even say those words why are you saying those words because you want to seem super reasonable and like well maybe later on in court you know we can bring up a witness that said well during the class mr jones said i hope you'll never have to use this well that makes him a super reasonable person case dismissed you get extra super reasonable person discussions for when you say oh come on paul it doesn't make a difference the heck it doesn't the heck it doesn't guns are tools they're objects it is your mind that's going to save your life or not save your life and uh ed morales in his book and what was actually it was in the teachings when, when they sent him to the uh, the academy and he had to teach young skulls full of mush he told him he said you better get this if thing out of your lexicon if you're if you're hoping to survive someday out there in the streets where there are people who want to make you dead you need to stop thinking if and start thinking when when i have to defend my life with this gun this is what i'm going to do when i am attacked this is what i'm going to do oh that's right because it was a student of his yes it was a couple that changed his mindset and instead and he because he was the he was the if guy yeah and when you're the if person it's easy to make excuses you see if you're the if person you're like well i don't need to spend focus i don't want to spend a folk whole lot of time on training i don't want to spend a whole lot of time on practice and besides that i'm only carrying this just in case if maybe if i said to you here's a firearm you need to train with it you need to practice with it because at some point in the future i'm not going to tell you when but at some point in the future you will be attacked and you're going to have to use this gun to save your life and if you don't use it properly you will die go how are you going to address that now if you go the opposite and you're like well the chances are you know uh statistically speaking you'll probably never have to use your gun if you if you go into it with that then that is how you will look at it if someone convinces you well statistically speaking you'll probably never have to use your gun well then why am i wasting time practicing I have other things to do. I wanted, I was going to go, I thought about going to the range and practicing, but I got other things to do. I got other stuff to do. You know, I was thinking about cleaning my gun, but I got other things to do. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's how humans operate. You see, it's the human that we need to work with, not the gun. The gun knows what to do. The gun's perfectly fine. And see, that's Jared. That's where everybody puts all their focus. They're like, oh, I'm going to make this gun better by putting a new trigger in it and I'm going to cut funky weird grooves in the front of the slide and i'm gonna stipple the grab and i'm gonna I'm gonna do all these things they focus all their attention on the gun they need to be focusing attention on themselves they need to be focusing attention on the shooter so and you're like wow that's that's a long way from a shower gun discussion um uh, it's important though it's important <laughs> and people we we shared this this you know uh, story and of course people being who they are jumped in and they made all kinds of comments like well maybe if the gun was a hundred percent stainless with polymer grips and 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 you used um a nickel cased ammunition I'm like oh my god what you are you, you thinking it's gonna hang on a string around the freaking around the hot faucet like well you can only put one in there if it's a hundred percent stainless and i was like Put it in a plastic, a waterproof plastic box. That's what I was going to say about the uh, crossbreed holsters. They're already leather and Kydex. <laughs> I mean, you you could probably just use it as long as you're not running water directly over it. I don't think I'd put, I want to put leather in a hot, steamy box for years on end. Well, if you're enclosed, it's different. But if you have like a, I don't know, our shower doesn't really get like. Your like shower doesn't get hot, mine does. It gets hot, but. Um, here's the thing. Here's what you do with a shower gun. You go get a high point C9. You go to Amazon. You buy an orange marine storage box. There you go. It has a rubber seal. You put the gun in there, and there it is. Ta-da! 
And who's the dummy now? That's right. There's so. a link to our video on shower guns in the show notes. Yep. It sure is. All right. You guys want to talk about free guns? I want to talk about free guns. Let's talk about free guns. Uh, we talk about shower guns. Now let's talk about free guns. What's most bizarre about this this story is not that it actually happened. It's the reaction of the adult humans that makes me sad for the world. Well, there's been a psyop to make people afraid of guns. Yes. So it's not really their fault. Mm, yeah, but well, I didn't fall for it. You're also in the gun industry. Am I, am I magic? Yeah, no. Um, what makes people easily be easy victims to psyops? That's a good question. Probably uh, nutrition. Probably seed oils. Nutrition and, and uh, malnourished brains. But anyway. Bizarre screw up sends box of rifles to a stunned high school. The whole high school was stunned. So you, if you went and you looked at the building, building, it had that like surprise look on its face. You ever seen a building that had a surprise look? Yeah, in an anime. <laughs> August 24th. So this just happened. A Pennsylvania high school awaiting a delivery of textbooks got a box full of guns instead in a screw up that left educators stunned. They were stunned. The box containing six 30 caliber M1 rifles arrived last oh. week at Chester High School in Delaware County. Man. After it was opened to reveal its contents, shock school office officials immediately called the police. I wonder if they like ran out of the room, locked the door behind them because they were afraid the guns were going to jump out of the box and get them. When deliveries come in, we check everything. Kevin Thomas, Chester High School maintenance employee, told the station. No way. You check the deliveries? Yeah. Who does that? Usually it's like school supplies, so I don't think in the history nothing like this has ever happened. So it Okay, hang on. So misunderstanding. I don't think nothing like this. So if he, he doesn't think nothing no, like said, this. I don't think in the history nothing else nothing like this has ever happened or has anything like this ever happened i'm not sure but anyway so communication it had been a big misunderstanding a big mistake obviously and you know who did who did it well apparently there was like they transposed a number on the shipping manifest uh, like school uh, superintendent craig parkinson said the school was awaiting a delivery of textbooks for the start of the school year when a box of rifles arrived Anytime, any type of firearm on a school ground, school property, they have to be confiscated. What? Anytime. This is a quote from a the head of the school, the superintendent. Anytime, any type of firearms on a school ground, school property, they have to be confiscated. That's not even a real sentence. So, so like if a police officer walks in with the gun holster that somebody has to confiscate that who's going to confiscate it from the gun it's the craig parkinson maybe craig has parkinson's i don't guns, know because he can't make a good sentence the guns manufactured by springfield armory were stored at the school uh, over the weekend then fetched on monday by fedex after a mistake was discovered isn't that what normally would happen that's not like, well hey we delivered this to the wrong place let's go pick it up and um the driver was Oh, this is a quote from Parkinson. He said, the driver was, you can see, visibly concerned and very professional, very apologetic. He definitely made it clear that it was a mistake. Well, duh. Well, you duh. You order it. And you, all right. Let me see. Uh, a base model. Springfield. Armory. Police determined it was an honest mistake, possibly due to a typo in the address. Although students have not yet returned for class, the district sent a note to parents to assure them things were under control. Okay, so this this is where the train the train just jumped off the rails and went straight to Idiotville. So there were no the school is not in session yet. The school's not in session. So the only people there were like the a few teachers and some maintenance people and administrators and stuff, right? So no children were there. Wow. Base level Springfield M1A starts at MSRP $2,023. That's nice. low level. No, no, you can get a an uh, a no frills, no standard nothing 
for seventeen seventy seven. Okay, so around eighteen hundred bucks for a base level. We don't know what kind of which rifles they were. These could have been the super cool SOCOMs, uh, or the tanker models, or the whatever. We don't know, but suffice it to say, about two grand a piece times six, so at least twelve grand worth of rifles sitting there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the maymays people are like they, they did the maymay lord i've seen what you've done for other people <laughs> and i want that for me that's crazy uh, oh man. so yeah the most bizarre thing about this is so even though right it says no school was not yet in session so no children were exposed to the scent of these rifles i mean they, they couldn't have they were locked in a room and no one could have seen them but they, the the scent of the rifles might have like drifted out of the hallways so at no time no children were ever so the school district drafts up a f bargain letter and sent it to all the parents to assure them that everything is well. It's like, I got an idea. Why don't you just take care of it and shut up about it? Why would you do that? Yeah, I'm just wondering what. I just was. wanted to let you know that when, even though your children weren't in school and had no opportunity at all to see or smell or taste these unloaded rifles, which were all boxed up in shipping containers. Yeah. We want to let you know that everything is okay. Can you imagine getting a letter from a, a school saying, well, we want to let you know that, that some rifles showed up at the school by accident. And, but we, we sent them back. And so everything's okay. You're like, what? Are you retarded? Oh, let's see what Steve Gretzky, no relation, or maybe he is a relation. I don't know. Uh, let's see what Steve Gretzky had to say. Uh, sorry, I was reading a comment and I shouldn't have done that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to read the comment from Tiara Gibbs, um, a parent? No, no, no. I was reading like a comment on the story. Oh, I so shouldn't have done. I you shouldn't should have not have done that. So. Tiara Gibbs, yeah, she said after receiving a letter from the school telling them that everything was okay. I think it's ridiculous. She's just about to start school this year, and to hear something like that, I don't know if I want to bring her here. All right, Chester, please come in. I got to move on because this is, yeah, there you go. So a parent, um, Tiara Gibbs said, "I don't. This is ridiculous." She about to start school then. Now I don't know what if I want to take her there. Well, then don't. Are you retarded? Chester Police Commissioner Stephen Gretzky said that the box was addressed to a nearby auto repair shop whose owner is a firearms enthusiast. Uh, Gretzky said that he was an avid gun collector. I'm just grateful <laughs> we had positive results that we were able to get the firearms from the high school back here instead of somewhere else on the street of the city of Chester. On the street, because that's what usually what happens to UPS boxes or FedEx boxes is what they do is they just like, they come up Shut to an intersection, on. they open up the back, and they throw them out. It's like, um, there's like, whoa. Like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, or was it that movie or the other one? What? When he's, he's a UPS driver. Remember the oh, it was the first one. When he's kicking the yeah. box down the road. He goes, DHS, folks. No, that's what it was. Yeah. Like. Coming through, DHS, home, PHS coming through. And that's what usually happens is on the street. I love how they, how, how Steve Gretzky, police commissioner at large. Maybe we should start a new show. Steve Gretzky, police commissioner at large. Keeping the streets safe from guns. Oh. Chester is a suburb of Philadelphia, which is the safest, most wonderful place in the world for you to live. Oh, that's right. It's not. Philadelphia is a disgusting shite hole. Well, you know why it is? Because of Springfield Armory.
that's why Philadelphia is so dangerous because of FedEx and Springfield Armory. If it wasn't for FedEx and Springfield Armory, there'd be no crime in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, this, and when I, when, I, when I gave this story to Zach, he's like, didn't that already happen? And I said, yeah, I know. It, sound, it seems familiar, doesn't it? There was another time when like a shipment of guns got accidentally delivered to someone and they opened the box. They're like, hey. So, but what I want to know is the, the auto repair parts shop, I'm guessing this guy runs an FFL out of there because generally Springfield can't just say, <laughs> Lord, I've seen what you've done for other people in Philadelphia. And I want that for me. <laughs> I want the FedEx guy to bring six Springfield Armory rifles to my front door. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's the story is not what's bizarre. What's bizarre is the reaction of the slaves. Oh, I don't know if I want my child to go to school there. Then don't. Keep her home. Oh, I can't keep her home. What am I going to do? I'm going to watch my stories if she's at the house all day long. I, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to watch your stories if your kid's at the house all day long. <sighs> people, people, people. When God sends you free guns, you don't complain about it. You're like, oh, that would have been theft of a fire. I know I wouldn't have kept them. But I, would, I might have asked the guy at the auto parts store or the auto body shop if, for a reward. <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't the school have just like looked at the address and and then contacted that person and said, hey, do you want your package? Well, no. I, if the if the address was typed wrong and it was the I, I think what might have oh, I don't know because it said it was a paperwork mistake uh, didn't it say it was like a paperwork uh, mistake said, or it something did say like a transposed address so maybe that's yeah a transposed they somebody tra it wasn't 6054 it was 5062 or yeah or 5064 or 46 or something like that instead of yeah so instead of sending it to 308 they sent it to 803 that's right West Jefferson Avenue so whatever, but yeah, the, 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 I, it was like somebody in our audience said, it's like they delivered plutonium or something. Yeah. Like they dropped off a box of radioactive waste and like, what are we going to do? I don't know. <laughs> and to, to their credit, apparently the Popo weren't like crazy excited because they said, oh, they just stored them in the, in, they just locked them in the high school over the weekend. So congratulations to Chester PD for not sending out like the bomb robot or something, you know, that, that would have been the next thing I would have expected. They sent the, the, the EOD bomb disposal robot in to check the rifles and make sure they weren't. <laughs> oh, kids, kids, shower guns and free rifles. That was what we're all about here at student of the gun. We need to contact Springfield Armory and ask them if they're willing to give away a g <laughs> if we can do a an M1A giveaway in conjunction <laughs> with Student of the Gun. Uh, if you're like, well, I don't like Springfield Armory. I don't. I wouldn't take one of their rifles if it was free. Well, there you go. There you go. All right, that's it. Tomorrow, Thursday's bonus hour. We're going to be back, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to deliver excellent content to you. What is that content? It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise to me. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, we do have a story. A judge in Seattle let a, uh, a, a dangerous felon out of jail. But before he let him out of jail, the judge told the judge made him promise not to commit any more crimes. And we're going to go ahead and jump in uh, tomorrow. We're going to talk about how well that worked out. Talk about how well that worked out. Made him promise not to commit any more crimes. And he said, all right, Yana, I promise I will not commit any more crimes. All right. Well, there you go. How'd that work out? But for now, all of you out there in the student of the gun listening audience, thank you for being here. 
Appreciate your patience and attention. And remember, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.